We're back at it with Telltale's Walking Dead Season 2. I already know a whole lot of these characters are about to be mid beyond belief. First up, we've got Michelle, a scavenger we meet up with at Gil's pit stop when Clementine is traveling with Krista and Omid. That's a slam dunk F tier. This girl pulls up on Clementine and robs her at gunpoint, and then she goes and kills Omid. An unforgivable offense. The only thing good about this character was watching the nine months pregnant Krista just gut check her with a shotgun. Easy pick, and now we have Sam the dog, a friend Clementine meets up with after she's separated from Krista. This dog attacks Clementine and gives her a scar on her arm. In Sam's defense, that's not his fault. Unfortunately, Sam, who I'm sure was the best boy who ever existed, was a dog who had likely been without food for weeks. So when Clementine reached for the can of beans while Sam was eating, she made a critical mistake. Sam only did what was natural. And Sam was certainly kind to Clementine before that incident occurred. I'm still putting him in the animal tier. Now we've got the members of the cabin group, a set of individuals Clementine joins for the duration of the season. First up, we have Peter Randall. Pete is only one of two motherfuckers of the cabin group that isn't utterly annoying. Pete trusts Clem when she tells him her wound came from a dog and not a walker. He calls Clementine tough as nails and defends Clementine from Rebecca's annoying accusations. It's just too bad that the good one had to go and get bit later on in episode one of season two. If you choose to help Nick, Pete will be devoured by walkers at the end of the episode. However, if you help Pete, Clementine will hang with him for a while into the second episode. While locked in a truck, Pete will contemplate cutting his leg off to stop his infection but that would just kill him even faster. In the end, Pete aims to help Clementine make it back to the cabin by distracting the nearby walkers. Clem can try to bring him along, but he won't make it. Pete is either devoured by walkers or presumably executed by Carver or one of his men. Pete was a good guy who died way too soon. I bet you a lot of the issues that the group had in season two would have been resolved if Pete hadn't died so soon. Put Peter Parker in B tier, he definitely shined by prioritizing Clementine's safety over his own, even if it meant getting eaten alive. Now we've got Luke, probably the fan favorite member of the cabin group. He gets points for being one of the more sensible members of the group. Luke does successfully take control of things after Pete dies and leads them on a five day walk through the woods in episode two. Luke is pretty inoffensive. The only time he's annoying is when he doesn't trust Clementine early on in episode one, which I guess is somewhat justifiable. However, Luke is overall a good character, probably going into B tier. Luke should go into C tier for screwing up in episode four and not seeing a horde of walkers approaching the Civil War Memorial location, all because he wanted to go for a short liaison with Jane. No shot, are you getting on another man's case for being horny? Joe, think about it. This is more than two years into the apocalypse and everyone in the cabin group just got done covering themselves head to toe in walker guts so they could escape house. Ain't no running water, soap, toothpaste, or toilet paper. Everyone smells like shit and is probably covered in it too. Are you really trying to do the horizontal dance in those conditions? I'm not gonna lie to you, Donald. I could have gone the entire rest of this video without thinking of any of that. Okay, you raise a good point. Petting the cat in this situation sounds like it would be pretty unsanitary. Not to mention Luke's pullout game must be weak as shit considering Jane got pregnant from this. I still think he's an A-tier character. I'm putting Luke in B-tier and moving on from this character before either of you takes this conversation a step further. Now we're on to Rebecca, the mother of Alvin Jr a character who will be vital to Clementine's journey in seasons three and four. D tier, probably even an F tier. Rebecca is easily the most hostile character at the start of the season. She legit pulls up on an 11 year old girl and tries to press Clementine into going out in the cold forest all alone. Then Rebecca drops a stay the hell away from my husband like, ma'am, you're talking to a child. That's why I always press Rebecca on the actual father of her child. It's hilarious watching her squirm when she realizes Clementine knows something. Clementine was cold as f for that one. Rebecca does come around on Clementine shortly after this. Don't really know why. I guess she realized beefing with a little girl as a grown woman was a bad look. For the rest of the season, Rebecca basically has to be taken care of due to her advanced pregnancy. I will give Rebecca points for standing and watching Kenny beat Carver's face in. I guess I'll be kind and give her a C tier. She is a somewhat important character. And unlike Larry, she's not a giant pain in the ass start to finish. I will also go with C tier, and now we have Alvin Sr. Rebecca's husband and father of AJ. I do like him a bit. 
He gives Clementine a juice box and some medical supplies if you ask him in episode one. He's better than his wife, but I'll never forget when his lazy ass made Clementine go look for food for Rebecca instead of handling it himself. I looked bro dead in the eye and asked him why he didn't go looking for food for his wife, and he said, nah, I'm just gonna sit here. These motherfuckers think this is an anime where a 12-year-old needs to carry the entire team. Y'all are adults. Stop asking Clem to do everything. Alvin will potentially die at the end of episode two if you don't stop Kenny from continuing to shoot. Otherwise, Alvin will make it to the end of episode three. He's been beaten within an inch of his life by Carver, but he makes one final stand for Clementine and secures her escape from Carver's office. Put Alvin in C tier, it's true that he's a bit better than Rebecca, but not that much better. If not for the juice box he gives Clem in episode one, I'd put him in D tier, but C tier is fine. Now we've got Nick, the nephew of Pete, and a good friend of Luke. This dude is basically Ben, part two. Nick has worse trigger discipline than Clementine. He aims a rifle at her in episode one. And the entire time he has his finger on the trigger, when Clementine gets up, he damn near shoots her in the gut. Then he goes on to shoot Matthew when Luke has it under control. After that, there isn't much good from Nick. He'll potentially be killed by a walker if Clem chooses to condemn him for killing Matthew. If you defend Nick, he'll make it through episode three, where he does basically nothing. And then in episode four, we find him stuck in a fence having turned into a walker. Not gonna lie, Nick should go to D tier. Everything he does is annoying, and when he isn't doing something, he's being useless. And unlike Ben, Nick doesn't have the defense of being a minor. He should know better than to do the things he did. At least that shitbird Ben had enough common sense to not use a gun when he clearly isn't capable of doing so correctly. Stick Nick in D tier. Time for Carlos, the doctor of the group and father of Sarah. Dr. My ass bro couldn't tell the difference between a dog bite and a walker bite. Plus Carlos is pretty much everything that's wrong with Sarah. Instead of properly getting her prepared to survive in the zombie apocalypse, he babied her constantly, which resulted in Sarah completely shutting down after Carlos is killed in episode three. Mr. Doctor here thought it was smart to lock an 11-year-old girl in a shed while it was freezing and raining outside and with an open wound at that. Either Carlos is an ass doctor who couldn't tell that Clem's health would be compromised out there, or he did know what the risk would be and sentenced Clem to death. Putting Carlos in D tier, he does next to nothing all season and for some stupid reason, he places taking care of his daughter on Clementine. Speaking of which, now we have Sarah. Useless brat, she's like two years older than Clem and she can't do anything. Like Barry already said, that's not Sarah's fault. Carlos is the one who sheltered her from everything. He never taught her to shoot or hunt, never communicated the plan with her, and just look at her hair perfect for being grabbed by a walker. Sarah is very much like Clementine prior to Lee's conversation with Chuck in season one. The old man was right. If Lee hadn't stepped up, he and Clem would have wound up like Carlos and Sarah. I truly have no hate in my heart for Sarah, even though she refuses to get up and leave the RV during episode four unless you slap her. She was dealt a bad hand by her overbearing father. She's at least B tier. I suppose her getting up after being hit does imply there might have been just a slight amount of hope for her, but the character doesn't do much more than Ben and Duck. She should go in C tier. Unfortunately, telltale narrative reigns supreme. Sarah is determinate. So if you do manage to save her from the RV, she will unfortunately be trapped under a bunch of debris when the deck of the Civil War Memorial site collapses. She is then promptly eaten by walkers. I agree with Donald's C-tier placement. Now we're done with the cabin group and move on to the ski lodge, a group of individuals we find Kenny with during episode two. First up is Walter. A good guy who meets an unfortunate demise when he and his group are living peacefully on the ski lodge. Bro has a bit of a dark side though when he finds out his boy Matthew is dead Bro goes on his villain arc and will let Nick get eaten by walkers if Clem didn't speak in his defense. Walt will unfortunately be killed in retribution for Kenny taking out one of Carver's men. He's a short-lived character who's pretty unoffensive, so we're going to put him in C tier and jump to Matthew, Walt's friend, who we meet on a bridge. Seemed like a good guy. Once we assured him we were not a threat, he offered to accept the cabin group to his home, and he even offered us some food. Too bad Nick's dumbass shows up and shoots him. Unfortunately, Matthew didn't live long enough to leave an impact. I'll put him in C tier for seemingly being a good guy though. Next up is Sarita, Kenny's new girlfriend. Starting to notice a trend here with Kenny. Bro has a thing for women with accents and you know what? I don't blame him. Sarita is a very nice woman, but unlike Katya, she's very clearly been hardened by the apocalypse. She's proven herself capable of fighting walkers and people. Sarita also gives Clementine some tasks befitting a child instead of making her repair a wind turbine or some other crap. She has Clem help decorate the Christmas tree. Finally, 
someone who lets Clem be a kid for the first time in years. Sarita will make it through episode three. During the escape from house, she ends up getting bit, and we have two options, cut off her hand to save her or leave it be. Unfortunately, cutting Sarita's hand doesn't pay off because she understandably screams from the pain and is devoured by walkers. If you don't cut her hand off, Sarita will make it until halfway through episode four, where she will slowly start to turn. She will eventually be killed by Kenny to prevent her from becoming a walker. Sarita is a good character who deserved better. We'll put her in B tier. That concludes the ski lodge, and it's time for the people we meet at Howe's, Carver's camp. First up is Troy. Put him in F tier, don't give this son of a bitch a bit of breathing room, he smacks Clementine. Troy does not pass the vibe test at all. Troy dies when Jane hilariously shoots him in the dick and leaves him to get eaten by walkers. He's going in F tier and now we have Reggie. Poor guy. Reggie was meant to escape with the cabin group but had to be left behind. He had two arms when everyone last saw him. He claims he got bitten and Carver cut it off to save him. Too bad he's a bit of an idiot. When Carver puts him in charge of overseeing Clementine and Sarah as they tend to the plants in the greenhouse, Reggie does what every other adult in this season does and leaves dealing with Sarah up to Clementine. No matter what you do, someone's job won't be done and Reggie faces the consequences. Not that I think Reggie deserved to die, but Carver has a point. Reggie was the manager in that situation and making sure the work gets done was on him, not Clementine. In the end, Reggie is pushed to his death by Carver. Reggie is barely a character worth remembering, but he isn't bad, so I say he goes in C tier. Agreed, next up we have Mike, another survivor from Howes. Mike starts out as a pretty decent guy. He actually points out to everyone that Clementine is a kid and shouldn't have to carry this entire team. Bro is also built like an ox. He carries two five gallon jugs of water like it's light work for him. Too bad Mike sits here and steals supplies from the group and tries to leave with Arvo and potentially Bonnie. It completely destroys what would normally be a pretty good character. Yep, Mike was a good guy, but setting aside Kenny and Jane, he still condemned Clementine and AJ to certain death by trying to take the supplies in the truck that Kenny repaired, F-tier with Bonnie. Mike tried to be Lee 2.0, but ended up being a loser, F-tier. Now at last we have Carver, the leader of the house community. I'd say he's the central antagonist, but he didn't make it past episode three. Carver first appears during episode two when he finds the cabin and Clementine is forced to cover for Sarah, who is hiding. Carver comes off as a kind individual, but you can tell he's up to no good. He won't find what he's looking for and will eventually leave. Carver will show up again in episode two, and he and his team save everyone at the ski lodge. But of course, he'll take everyone hostage and have a standoff with Kenny. If you allow Alvin to be killed, Carver will eventually take Clem hostage which will make Ken give up. I'll give Carver some points for one thing. In episode three, he actually acknowledges that Clementine is a little badass in the making. At least the man knows potential when he sees it. Too bad Carver is a giant piece of shit. It's unknown exactly what his relationship with Rebecca was, but it has some seriously suspect undertones. He makes Carlos abuse his daughter and he beats one of Kenny's eyes out using a radio. Kenny got his get back for that one though and it's one of the best beatdowns I've seen in fiction. Straight up, Kenny turned Carver's face into a fine bowl for cereal. Carver's going into F tier. Unlike the stranger who had some interesting dialogue and a reasonable motivation, Carver is a madman who kills and hurts people for not living up to his insane standards. Time to finally rank you know who, it's Arvo. Put his ass in F tier. No way, that's not enough. Make a whole new tier and just call it Arvo. We're in agreement Arvo is trash and I won't be convinced of anything else. This little brat shows up in episode four trying to hide his supplies. Clementine and Jane can steal from him or let him go. Either way, it doesn't matter because this bastard will jump the group at the end of episode four to rob them of their supplies. All of this while there's a literal baby in the group. I gotta admit, I kind of felt sorry for Arvo with the way Kenny was beating on him. But then the kid goes and joins Bonnie and Mike in stealing our supplies, and then he has the nerve to shoot Clementine. All right, it's done. Arvo has his own special little tear at the bottom of it all. Now we have the final two characters of the season. We have Jane and Kenny. Now I have a quick question for you two. Who did you go with at the end of season two? Kenny, of course, is our boy, and he's always put Clementine first. The only answer is Jane. Kenny is way too far gone by this point and can't be trusted. He even says this himself. Oh my fucking God, why am I not surprised? Of course, you're the Jane fan, Sleepy Joe. Jane correctly points out that Kenny is slipping in and out of sanity by the time Sarita dies. When Jane doesn't come back with Alvin Jr., what does Kenny do? He immediately snaps and attacks Jane. Well, no shit, Joe. What the hell was Jane thinking leaving Alvin Jr. alone in a car during a fucking blizzard? 
She risked the kid's life just to prove a point. And the entire time she and Kenny are fighting, she doesn't once think to speak up and tell the truth. She didn't just want to abandon Kenny, she wanted to kill him. There's definitely something to be said of Jane refusing to reveal the truth. Even when Kenny has her pinned to the ground and is preparing to stab her dead, she clearly thought she would win the fight or that Clementine would save her. But let's not focus on that at the moment. I think Jane is a decent character. She helps train Clementine, making her more capable against walkers by teaching her a takedown technique that Clem still utilizes all the way up to season four. Plus, Jane is about the only one in the group that can keep her head on straight. Jane doesn't even care about anyone else. The only thing she wants is to have Clementine to herself to replace her dead sister. But then Jane goes and strings herself up between season two and three only a few months later because she got knocked up by Luke. It was kind of messed up for Jane to take herself out after going to such lengths to remove Kenny from the equation. She also did so in the way that would cause Clementine the most grief. Clem returned to house and had to see Jane as a walker, and Clem either had to leave her there or take her out. You can't blame Jane for that. She was clearly going through a ton of depression after realizing she was carrying Luke's kid, and she knew she would be another huge burden on Clem. That doesn't excuse her for putting Clementine in a situation where she would be alone with an infant, AJ. Kenny stuck with Clem for much longer, and that's why he's the right choice. With that in mind, we're going to finally jump to Kenny, but before that, let's rank Jane. Jane is an easy S tier. She's a good character who had Clementine's back, and she was the only one who would stand up to Kenny when he was losing his mind. Nonsense. Jane leaves the group in episode four and only comes back because she hears Arvo's group shooting. She constantly tries to provoke Kenny in the truck in episode five by poking at his dead family and Sarita. She was basically begging Kenny to snap. She deserves everything she got. Jane is C-tier at best, and the only good thing she did was teach Clem the takedown technique. I'm gonna say Jane is an A-tier character. I'm not a fan of her decisions in episode five. But her motivations are understandable, and she does have a point about Kenny going further off the deep end. If only she'd chosen to handle things a bit better. So let's average Jane to B tier and move on to the big man himself, Kenny, our good friend who goes all the way back to season one. Kenny is a bit of an annoyance in season one. If you don't side with him in 100% of all situations, he will not be particularly kind to Lee all the way to the point that he'll refuse to help you when Lee is trapped under a door with walkers piling on him. Kenny is allowed to not be on Lee's side 100% of the time. Trust has to be earned. Yeah, that's BS. I helped this man with his son on Herschel's farm, again in the pharmacy. And I even made sure he and his entire family got food over Mark and Doug. But all because I didn't want to crush Larry's head in, he's done with me. I do agree with Joe here. If you're always on Kenny's side, he's Lee's good friend, but you leave him hanging even once and it's over between you. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Kenny is still one of the best written characters in the entire series. That is also very true. Kenny is a man who just doesn't know how to give up. Kenny is faced with some of the hardest things a person will ever face. But just like Captain America, Kenny can do this all day. I do have immense respect for Kenny putting other people, especially children, over himself. When he realizes Krista is pregnant, he will sacrifice himself to rescue her. Granted, this only happens if you killed Ben in season one, episode four. Kenny gets lucky in season one and makes it to season two, where we see him once again being the fighter he's always been. Sniping Carver's men in the ski lodge and even taking a shot on the big boss himself. Kenny gives up here because Clementine was taken hostage or begs him to stop. At Howe's, Kenny is the one trying to keep the group focused on escaping. But when Carver catches on, what does Kenny do? He takes the fall for Clementine, who stole a radio. And let's just say that Carver did not take that line down. Seriously, I don't want to know what Carver would have done to Clem if he found her with it. Yet again, this dude, Kenny, doesn't know when to quit. He recovers from Carver's beating in a few hours and gets to return the favor. However, this is a sign that Kenny's sanity is slipping. The way he destroyed Carver was a tad excessive. Nonsense, Carver had it coming and Kenny is a badass for immediately shooting Carver in both his knees. Things don't get better for Kenny after Sarita is bit. Kenny refuses to give up on her. And just like with Duck, Kenny prolonged her suffering for nothing. But after Alvin Jr. is born and Rebecca dies due to complications with giving birth, Kenny finds a new purpose to make sure AJ and Clementine are safe no matter what. And that's what guides Kenny in episode five as he tries to get everyone to Wellington. And that is why I can't blame Kenny for beating on Arvo or killing Jane. Both of them constantly put the kids at risk. I agree. Jane pretending to lose AJ was one step too far. Deliberately triggering him in an already tense situation was supremely stupid. 
If you happen to shoot Kenny before he can kill Jane, he will apologize for letting everyone down and admit that despite seeking death for so long, now that he's finally facing it, he's scared. Screw that. Once Kenny takes Jane out, he, Clementine, and AJ can go off together assuming you don't pick the alone with AJ ending. Turns out Kenny was right all along. Wellington was real. Kenny is always right, just like with the boat in season one. A broken clock is right twice, I guess. Also, finding the boat in Savannah was a stroke of luck, and it was Clementine who found it. Cope harder, Joe. Kenny once again proves that he is a good man. Wellington has scarce resources and can't take everyone, so he begs Edith to let AJ and Clementine in. And this scene is nearly as sad as Lee's death. No doubt. The goodbye if Clem chooses to go to Wellington is heart-wrenching, but so is Clementine's defiance if she chooses to leave with Kenny, aiming to keep the group together no matter what. I will agree, that scene got me choked up a little bit. If you leave with Kenny, he and Clementine will stay together for a bit of time bonding with Alvin Jr. and Clem. He resolves to go back to Florida. And on the way there, Kenny decides to teach Clem how to drive and, well... That ends up being Kenny's final choice. Clem hits some rough terrain and loses control of the car. And Kenny, who doesn't have a seatbelt, goes flying out of the car and loses control of his legs. And unfortunately, a horde of walkers approach and devour him. Damn you, Telltale, you couldn't just let Kenny live happily ever after, could you? Even in that moment, Kenny prioritizes Clem, making sure she doesn't have to see him get eaten. And that's the end of Kenny. Kenny is an S-plus tier character, one of the best written he rivals Clementine herself in that department. As good as Kenny is, he has a lot of problems in season one, from his obsession with finding a boat to his flip-flopping if you aren't on his side. He's got to be S-tier at most. Kenny is easily the best written character in my eyes. Sure, he has a bunch of issues, but those issues make him complex. He's about the best thing about the entirety of season two, and his development is top-notch. Kenny is going into the S-plus tier. Let's go, brother. Jane loses again. Whatever, man. Jane's still got a high rating. Before we end season two, we'll talk about the character named Edith. She's the woman Kenny and Clementine meet when they reach Wellington. A good and short-lived character, she sympathizes with Kenny's and Clem's situation and gives them a bag of supplies and tells them to come back to see if Wellington will accept people later. She'll drop you another bag if Clem tries to stay with Kenny. A bit too generous, but I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. In season three, Edith will have become close with Clementine and AJ, coming to warn them of the scavengers that are attacking. Edith tries to escape with the kids, but unfortunately, she gets shot in the head. Edith is an easy B-tier for how short-lived she is. I agree, she's B-tier. Great, time for another season break, and we'll return with Telltale's Walking Dead, Michonne, in season three.